This is the Farms.com Corn Report, sponsored by Mazex Seeds. Mazex Seeds, technology you want, yield you can count on. Kane Tuppelman, Mazex Seeds Yield Specialist for Huron and Perth County. Uh, here at the Outdoor Farm Show uh, in Woodstock, looking at some uh, scouting tips of late season corn disease. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some scouting uh, tricks of the trade as well as uh, some diseases to be looking for in, in your fields. Uh, a lot of fields tasseled in southwestern Ontario in the last two to three weeks. Uh, a lot of application both by ground and aerial of fungicides at the VT timing. So now's a great time to get out, take a look in your field, look for effectiveness of the uh, products that were applied as well as maybe if you didn't apply, uh, keeping track of what, what's out there. I uh, wanted to touch a little bit about some, uh, some leaf diseases we're seeing out in the field. Northern corn leaf blight, common rust and uh, some anthracnose, which I haven't seen a lot, but expect to see, as well as some other deficiencies and things to be looking at. As far as tools of the trade, right now, um, basically when I'm going into a field, I'm taking my knife, my hand lens, a uh, pair of safety goggles because the canopy is so thick, and uh, a camera on my phone as well as something to record notes on. Um, the big thing now is trying to get a representative sample in the field. Uh, that's not as easy as it is at knee-high corn. So basically you're going to have to pick a few points of entry, go in and, uh, and try and get a representative sample in the field. The first disease I wanted to touch base on is uh, northern corn leaf blight. Uh, we've been seeing significantly more northern corn leaf blight in, in the area in the last few years. Um, basically the inoculum starts in the residue and is splashed up on the leaves from heavy rainfalls or wet canopies uh, and then the secondary infection occurs within the plant. Looking at northern corn leaf blight, uh, we see some long elliptical type lesions on, a, on an untreated plant here. Um, basically tan color or gray color in the middle. A telltale sign and where your hand lens will be helpful is, is with northern corn leaf blight we find black pycnidia within that lesion. So black pepper like spots uh, which is a, a diagnostic of the disease. Northern corn leaf blight again starts typically in the lower canopy and works its way up with secondary infection. Um, when you see severely uh, uh, blighted leaves or that look quite burnt uh, throughout. It's, it's a concern uh, that will yield impact. Um, basically when we start seeing leaves like this in the top third or up around the husk, anywhere from estimates of 30 to 50 percent uh, yield impact could take place when dealing with northern corn leaf blight. Uh, fungicides have given us pretty good control in the past. Uh, main, mainly the importance there is timing and getting it down before the infection. Another disease we're seeing in the fields when scouting is common rust. Again, pretty common uh, rust-like pustules, so orange-brown. Uh, scratch them off the leaf surface, you can find them. Uh, they will leave lesions if washed off underneath. Common rust blows in from host crops uh, in the south, off living organisms, blown in with tropical storms or heavy winds. So again, you can find it anywhere in the canopy within the corn. So that's where it's important to make sure you see different parts of the field when scouting. Common rust also uh, controlled fairly well by our fungicides that we've been using. And uh, again, the timing and importance of getting it early enough is significant in saving yield. Yield impact from common rust is less than northern corn leaf blight. However, still something we want to document document what varieties we're finding it in and what fields on what pressure. Um, thirdly, another disease that we haven't seen a lot of but expect to uh, is the anthracnose family of diseases. Anthracnose leaf blight occurs as orange, uh, orange tan type irregular lesions on the leaf. Uh, we also see a halo or an orange or yellow outline on the perimeter of the lesion. Uh, anthracnose top dieback we typically see three to five weeks after tasseling so soon in this time frame where the tops will start dying out of these corn plants. Uh, anthracnose stock rot is a pretty common um, and significant stock rot. Um, very easily diagnosed by black straight lines on the perimeter of the shaft of the stock and easily detected that way. Um, take a knife, cut it open, look at the infection. Another good thing to do at this stage is walk through and, and check for stock stock rots by the pinch or push test. With the pinch test we're basically looking at how strong that stock is with or without disease. We're looking at the brace root and pinching up the stock in that first node and looking for weakness or softness. This will help when, uh, when prioritizing harvest or watching for stock rots later in the season. The best way to do it, go into your canopy, into your crop, look at 20 plants in a row, 
write down how many are affected and prioritize based on how many are going down it in about five spots within the field so 100 total plants the push test similarly to check stock strength and the uh, uh, occurrence of stock rots just get in close give the corn a good push at arm's length and feel if any of those are breaking off again document how many are doing that on 20 plants in at least five spots in the field and it'll give you a good indication of late season stock health and harvest prior prioritization another thing when scouting a lot of fields this time of year we're seeing a lot of nitrogen deficiency in the plants which is often uh, mistaken for a leaf disease or a problem with the corn it's not necessarily indicating that we didn't apply enough nitrogen it could be a, a factor that we have some losses or the fact that the root masses aren't big enough to properly take up enough nitrogen to survive the plant right now nitrogen is mobile in the plant which is important to remember meaning the nutrients can move up to where the plant needs it so the stock moves it up according and in, into the cob um, basically what we're looking at as far as symptomology is an inverted V burn pattern in those lower leaves so you can see the yellowing in that V that comes to a, an apex at the point um, these will continue to pale off and 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 completely lose their greenness and and indicate that the uh, the nitrogen has moved from the lower leaves up into the corn crop so again a great time to be out looking and scouting your crop uh, looking for late disease looking for stock rots looking for harvestability problems that may come down the road looking for how efficient maybe your fungicide application has been uh, if you applied one and, and considering one next year again this site sprayed with preaxor relatively clean in the canopy as we'd expect uh, based on the proper application of timing. This has been the Farms.com Corn Report, sponsored by Mazex Seeds. Mazex Seeds, great seed, great people. Harvest the difference with Mazex.